Hey guys, Nick here with Nick's Collectibles. Today we're going to look at a couple more G.I. Joe classified figures. This being Firefly and Sea Viper. So the first thing you're going to notice on these is that they're part of the Cobra Island line, uh, which is mostly a Target exclusive line. Let's go ahead and take a look at Firefly here real quick in the box. So you can see from the actual box, he's got a drone that he comes with, he's got his rifle, he's got a remote that actually helps him control the drone itself, and let's go ahead and move this up a little bit more, okay. He's got some dynamite, he's got his backpack, and then he's got his goggles that he can wear. He's all dressed up in like an urban camouflage kind of bomb suit, I think it looks great. Let's go ahead and take a look at Sea Viper next. So. As you can see from looking at this one, that he actually looks just like Sea Viper. He's got this backpack, he's got a pair of goggles, why he needs goggles I have no idea. He's got the little uh, neckerchief thing, got his rifle which looks amazing by the way, and a small pistol to go along with him. Both of these guys look like they're going to be really great additions. So as you can see side by side, they look great together in the box and I think they're going to look great outside of the box. So let's break them open and have a look. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at Firefly. I've pretty much gotten all of his accessories and everything on him so that we can go ahead and take him off and kind of take a look at him one at a time. You can see he's got really great detailing and coloring, both on the flak jacket and just the coloration and everything on him. And right now, you can see he's got his goggles. As we go ahead and pull those off, get a really good look at his face. The fact that those can pop on and off so that you can, like, you know, have different poses and looks for him as he falls over on me. <laughs> Look really good when he's not falling on his face. You know, balance, balance, work with me. Okay, yay, he's standing again. As I was saying, you can actually kind of look at the goggles, which are not quite in focus, but trust me, they look good. As you go ahead and move to the left here, you can take a look and you can see he's got a really nice detailing on his arm with like the kind of lines and everything in the shoulder plate. You can see from the back, on his backpack, he can actually hold most of his accessories. There's his gun, dynamite, and his drone all on the backpack. And then he's got all sorts of cool detailing with like wrenches and knives and things like that on the backpack. When you remove that, you actually get a better look at the flak jacket, the bomb suit type thing that he's wearing from the back, which I think looks really nice. Moving a little bit more to the side, you can see he's got like three grenades there, and then he's got, you know, the arm with all the nice lines and detailing there. So, overall, I think he's really good looking as far as like a Firefly aesthetic. Now let's take a look at his motion. Now his arm will move up to 90 and does a nice parallel movement. And then the one on the left, surprisingly, does the same thing, primarily because that plate will move out of the way, which is a great design choice. The legs will go pretty much out to 90. Well, if you push them a little bit, they don't want to stay there on their own. And then the knee will pretty much bend to like 90 and a little bit past. The foot articulation is admittedly not the best, but it's probably good enough for a figure like this and the poses you're going to want to put him in. But you can see it's, it's not amazing. Now his elbow joints pretty much move up to like 90 or a little better. Pretty standard for a figure like this. And then the hands and wrist rather will pretty much spin around pretty freely so you can move it in any direction you want to. The head's got good side to side motion. And it's got pretty okay up and down motion. It's not amazing but given the design of the figure it's kind of forgivable. I'm in trouble getting him to balance again. There we go. But here's a better look at basically the remote that he uses to control the drone, which is on his backpack now. You can actually kind of pop that off, and then it unfolds. We're going to see if he falls over again when I do that. Nope, nope, just his gun fell so far. And then the legs just kind of like deploy, like that. And then you have his little drone, which I think looks really cool. And the only disappointment with this part is it doesn't really come with any kind of stand, so you can't really make it look like it's flying or anything. Which would be a cool addition, but I think it would probably make the figure too expensive. And then, since the gun fell off, we're just going to take a look at that next. And honestly, I think it's a pretty good looking little submachine gun, as out of focus as it is. 
and then you can actually just kind of pop the dynamite off of his backpack, which honestly, once it's on, is a little tough to get off. He doesn't want to stand in my fanny fitting, but you can see there's the dynamite. That actually looks pretty good to me. It's a pretty solid accessory. However, all I have to say is pretty well designed. He's got really good facial features. He's got really good detailing on his pants and his arms. So, now that we've actually taken a look at Firefly, let's go ahead and take a look at the communications viper. Well, the first thing you notice is he's got his helmet and he's got uh, his handkerchief and some goggles. He also has his rifle right there in the front. If we go ahead and move to the side, you can actually see they've got really good detailing on like the arm and pretty much the, uh, the gauntlet as well. And then if we move back, you can actually take a look and see guys, we've got his backpack. Let's go ahead and move him a little bit closer so we can look at these things in a little bit more detail. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the head sculpt. The head actually moves side to side pretty well. It does not want to move up and down with the handkerchief on. So if you take that off, it actually has a little bit better movement up and down, although I did a poor job with the camera. I'm going to go ahead and take the goggles off because, frankly, they never made any sense to me anyway. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull his rifle out so we can actually get a better look at that. And you can see it's honestly not that badly detailed. I really wish they would do a little more work on these in the line, but for like a pack-in rifle, it's honestly really nice. You can see the arms will actually move all the way out to basically 90, and they make a good straight line. They actually do have a full range of motion, just like Firefly does, so that's good, what we expected. And the leg will move out pretty much to 90. It needs a little bit extra force to get there because it will hold it on its own, but it's fine. So as you go ahead and move him out, you can kind of take a look at the lunge. You can get a better look at the gauntlet and the arm itself. Um, you can even see the boot a little bit as I kind of try to manipulate him. There he goes. He's kind of standing on his own. There we go. Yeah. So, you, so the gauntlet and everything like that looks good. And then there's the holster for the pistol that the pistol's actually in along with his boots. And then looking at the back, you can get a really good look at the backpack. It's got like some rope and it looks like it's got some smoke grenades or something like that on it as well. And then the other side is basically identical. No real changes here, but the pant leg is a little bit different. It's got a nice little pocket. By moving back, you can get a good look at the boots. So as we move him to the front, you can actually see he stands pretty well on his own for the most part. Um, he's got a couple of like nice details there, like the smoke grenade, and he's about to fall. <laughs> ah, all right. So, say this again, he's got his Cobra emblem there, he's got his smoke grenades there. Lots of various different pockets, another Cobra emblem with more pouches. I have to say, overall, he's a really good looking figure. He's solidly designed, he fits within the line, particularly in the Cobra Island line. The one thing I will make note is do not try to remove the helmet. Um, I tried removing the helmet and the entire head popped off. So, even though they've got some detailing underneath the helmet, that makes it look like he has a face there. He does not. Um, it's just like the neck piece that it's attached to has the coloration of the fact that it's a more human neck and face proportion. Um, but do not try to remove the helmet unless you want to see his head pop off. Uh, it was pretty amusing when I did it. I just don't recommend it doing too much because like most figures in this price range, if you do it like too much to mess around with it or to, to jank with it, you're probably going to make it a little loose and it won't stick on there very well. Um, I also didn't pull the pistol out of his holster. I do apologize for that. Um, it's a pretty good looking pistol. It's no more detailed than the rifle, but it does fit really good on the side. And I think it's a really good addition to the character. One of the things I'm a big fan of in this line is that almost everything kind of has a place on the character. So you don't have a ton of accessories in most of this line that are just kind of laying around. For the most part, you can always display the character with either most of the items in their hand or on their person, which makes them much more better tailored than some of the figures that I have had in the past. And that includes some of like the Figma line and things like that, where you have all these extra hands and stuff that you really just have to put in a bag and label and you don't really know what to do with them. Uh, I consider it an advantage to this line. But let's go ahead and bring them both back together and kind of do some final thoughts. I have to say, overall, I actually really like these two guys. Now, I feel like I probably paid too much for them. They should have retailed for around 20 but most everybody was selling them in two packs for right around 120 for the pair, which makes them probably some of the most expensive G.I. Joe classifieds that I've ever run across. Uh, 
However, Target has been doing a very poor job, particularly in my area, of keeping these in stock. Now, if you can get these cheaper than that, closer to like 90 or less, I would recommend doing that. They realistically should retail for somewhere around like 55 to 60 after tax. Um, so they are way too expensive for realistically this line. Now, they do fit in really well with the rest of the G.I. Joe classified line. They have the same kind of posability. Uh, they work particularly well next to the rest of the Cobra Island line, which they should because they're designed specifically for that line. However, if you were to put these next to like Scarlet or Snake Eyes or even the Arctic um, Storm Shadow, they would still look and fit in and feel like part of that line. And I feel like they're a really good addition. They're really well detailed. They've got uh, plenty of good accessories. They look like a good upgraded version of the original figures that we all know and love. So if you're into this line and you really want them, I have to say they're solid figures. Are they worth the premium price that everybody's asking for? Probably not. Now, if you're a completionist or you're really into the line and you really want to get them, then you're probably going to have to pay that price. Um, I have missed out several figures because I've refused to pay that price in the past. Uh, Beachhead, which is going for almost like $100, and Baroness, which is going for... I think she goes for excess of $300 on uh, Amazon and eBay now because they never carry her in stock. I have no idea why Hasbro has insisted on doing this exclusive line with Target when Target is incapable of keeping them in stock or even stocking them on their store shelves. Um, it's becoming increasingly frustrating to collect this line as a result. However, that's not enough to really bag on these figures in particular just expressing some frustration with the line overall. However, these two are really good. They fit, they work, they're built right, durable, they look great. So if you're into them and you can get them at a good price, I do recommend getting them. Do I recommend paying the price that I probably paid for them to do this review? Probably not. I don't feel that they're worth quite that much. But if you can find them at a more reasonable price, then by all means go ahead and pick them up and enjoy them. I think they're great figures. I just wish I had paid a little bit less for them overall. Um, thank you guys for sticking with me this long and watching my review of these two. Hopefully you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the notify bell. And until next time, happy collecting.